Oh my goodness, hello, hello! Welcome to my new 2024 mid-year bullet journal setup. You guys know the drill by now. I do a new journal every six months, and this beautiful one is the Gentle Giant one from Notebook Therapy. It is blue, it is such a gorgeous color. Soft cover, gold detailing, two bookmarks. It's so, so lovely. Absolutely not sponsored, but if you want to check them out, I will have a link down below if you want to go see it. But let's get right into this setup, because like I said, I do a new journal every six months, and so I wanted to do a quick little setup that is similar to the one I did at the beginning of the year. That that video setup will also be linked down below if you want to check it out. Lots of things in the description box today. But I will say, just as a heads up, this video is a little bit of a chaotic mess, okay? Lighting was weird, positioning of my journal got weird sometimes, and also the spreads personally were just a little bit not up to my normal standard. I'll talk about that a little later, but unfortunately not my favorite setup in the entire world. However, that does not mean <laughs> that I don't want to give you guys tons of inspiration and cool ideas, so I hope you guys enjoy. And if you're new to this channel, definitely do go down and subscribe because I post videos every single Saturday and if you want to get into bullet journaling subscribing is the great way to get constant inspiration and ideas we're on the road to 20k I'm super excited about it and I would love if you would join our little online space okay so we've already started on the cover page here so on the right I have 2024 in huge huge letters y'all saw me do my name page at the front and then skip the little beginning page because that one doesn't really open all the way so the first official page is this cover page over here now if you guys remember what my original cover page looked like like from my first journal of the year, I had 2024 on the right in big bold letters, and then I had a beautiful artwork on the left. And because this is like twin journals kind of, because it's for the same year, I wanted to do a very similar look for both journals so that they matched. So I did 2020 in huge letters in the exact same font on the right side here, except I'm actually covering the letters with flowers instead, because I wanted to do something slightly different, but still like related, you know? Like kind of the sisters, not twins thing, although I did just call it twin journals, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So I have these flowers, just like wrapped around the letters they're supposed to be little roses although they're not going to be in red they're going to be in shades of blues and a little bit of yellow and this is going to tie into the artwork that i'm going to do in a minute on the left side of the page as far as drawing the roses themselves it's really super easy i feel like roses are one of the easier flowers to draw because it's basically just like a circle with lots of individual petals inside but i just usually start from the inside and work my way outwards in motions of like scribbles and circles and overlapping a little bit till i have just a basically like a small circle with overlapping circles lines and it basically resembles a rose and then after you add a little bit of coloring really just by filling in the circle then adding a second layer of marker for shadow on like the bottom edges of each flower it looks like a 3d rose it's really not that complicated very very beginner friendly I could definitely make this more complicated if I wanted to but I didn't want to I wanted it to be simple and small and cute so I like how this looks part of me was thinking about coloring in the white spots with black but I was afraid that it would make everything too dark because the leaves are already a dark brown all the flowers were shades of you know dark blue and stuff it did mean that the letters got a little bit lost and it wasn't very contrasty but the artwork that we're about to do on the left side will help add that contrast back into the spread so let's move on to doing the artwork next and i'll show you guys what i'm talking about so for the artwork i'm going to be drawing a princess now this is similar to cinderella okay i'll put the reference picture on the left here this definitely was a reference picture of someone drawing cinderella super super pretty but i added my own little details so I took out the castle there's only a moon in the background now and I'm actually covering the arch around this princess with roses to match the flowers on the right so kind of similar kind of different a little bit edited it looks a bit like Cinderella in that she's wearing a blue dress or she's going to be wearing a blue dress and she's white with blonde hair and I realized this is the third time that I've done a Disney character in my bullet journal who's white with blonde hair I need to add some like variety in there my last bullet journal I did someone with like a braid coming down the side so it wasn't actually a Disney princess but I have done Tinkerbell and Alice in Wonderland in the past so maybe the next Disney princess or character I need to do needs to be someone else like I don't know Pocahontas or Tiana or something <laughs> but that's for another month however for this one right here as you can see I have princess standing on a balcony with an arch over her and as usual I'm going to be coloring this in with alcohol markers since I am drawing on sticker paper I've had a million videos about this in the past but basically just to sum it up very quickly if you are new to my channel I like to use alcohol markers in my bullet journal but because they bleed through the paper I draw everything on sticker paper instead and then cut it out and put 
put it in my journal and that basically solves my problem of bleeding while also being able to use the cool artwork that is alcohol markers. So I'm starting off with the lighter colors and working my way to get darker. I will say as this coloring process goes on, you will see me do a lot of layering because I feel like alcohol markers are similar to watercolors a bit in that they kind of dry slightly lighter than they are put down. Um, it doesn't have that much of a difference. Like watercolor is a very extreme difference whenever they dry. I feel like alcohol markers are pretty close to the original color. However, I'm also a little timid when I start big art projects like this. I want to do like only the easy stuff first and then kind of work my way to something darker. So I will continue to add more layers, more shadows, and just add more contrast as the painting goes on. However, layering and blending is my middle name for something like this. I'm just adding and adding and adding and hopefully crossing my fingers that the ending result looks good. Now I want to do something similar to the cover page. That's why I'm doing like a bluish Cinderella theme here because it matches the blue of the cover page. Now, if you guys have been subscribed to me for a while, you would have seen that my January 20 24 bullet journal setup was actually blue whales like swimming blue whales i'll put a picture of it right here on the screen so you can see it i loved this theme i actually did watercolor and it really pushed me out of my comfort zone but it turned out pretty well i think i liked the setup i'll also link that down below if you're interested <laughs> that's like the third thing i'm linking but there's a lot down there in the description box if you want to go check her out but all that to say when i got this journal i really wanted it because it was super beautiful and i loved the design on the front but i didn't want to do another whale theme because i literally just did that six months ago kind of a coincidence i wish i maybe would have saved it until this journal because it would have been the perfect way to start off this setup but alas I couldn't do that and I didn't want to do something that you guys have already seen so changing trajectories I suppose I went on a different navy blue route and that is Cinderella or maybe like off-brand Cinderella because she's not like explicitly Cinderella but it kind of looks like her especially when I draw in the dress now you guys may be wondering like where's all the blue coming because this is a lot of brown I'm not gonna lie but I'm gonna be adding more blue of course in her dress in the sky behind her everything like that now as I'm coloring her dress the markers were like actually not working very well well most of them were working fine but my lightest blue was not working well it was getting very very streaky and like barely even like having ink come out unfortunately and this was a huge problem because the moonlight in this picture that's coming from the center is like radiating out and adding a lot of light to everything in the center and so I'm trying to emulate that with like intense highlights and leaving the corners of things much lighter than the outsides as you can see with like the balcony the railing an arch overhead it's much lighter than everything else in the balcony that's in shadow I just her hair are much lighter than the center which is again in shadow so of course I want to do the same thing with her dress and make the edges of it the light blue much lighter than everything else however I had to cheat a little bit I actually pulled out a Tombow brush pen which is actually a water-based pen in the same light blue color because my light blue and the alcohol markers was just not working for me unfortunately same thing goes for the sky so I find that water-based markers don't blend in nearly as well as alcohol-based markers so I could kind of cheat a little bit on the skirt because the texture adds to like the ruffle effect in the back of her skirt however on the sky I wanted it to be pretty smooth and so I had to color in all that light blue sections with the medium blue and then just make the sky darker to compensate for that gradient that I wanted like I said I'm just adding shadows and making things darker and darker as I go along and trying to blend things out and make it smooth around the moon it's a little bit streaky but it's not the worst thing in the world and overall I do like how it finished and turned out my one qualm with this painting I think I keep saying painting it's a drawing it's not a painting because it's alcohol markers but my main qualm is that the roses don't stand out nearly as much as I wanted them to whenever I first drew everything. I didn't know how dark I wanted everything to be, which is why the roses have dark brown vines because I assumed that the background was going to be a little lighter and they'd pop more. But then after adding all the shadow and contrast, the roses kind of blended into the darkness because they were all kind of the same tones, especially like the lighter roses were like the only really things you can see and they're kind of few and far between. Maybe in hindsight, if I redrew it, I would have drawn more little roses everywhere, but alas, I did not. So just to kind of finish up everything, I did pull out my white gel pen and clean up any lines that I missed, add tons and tons of highlights, try to highlight those roses that you can't really see as well. And then of course the edges of her dress, the edges of her hair that are basically glowing from the moonlight and then stars everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Now, if you're wondering about the flowers on the very right that I did color, but didn't really show you the footage of, unfortunately, I'm not actually going to be using this in the final pages, which is why I'm not using it in the video, but we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. So that is my final drawing. Oh, I think it's so, so beautiful. I'm really happy with it, honestly. I was nervous about it while I was actually drawing everything. It wasn't my favorite thing in the world and I had lots of issues with it. But now after a couple days of looking at it and really pondering, I really do think it turned out better than I was thinking when I first actually drew it. Like I said, it's kind of the mirror image or like the sister of my first journal from 2024 where I drew that girl with like the, I think she had a red dress, gold and like brown background. So it's almost like one is reddish brown 
brown and one is bluish brown. So they're like, you know, kind of pairs of each other. They match, but they are distinctively different. And overall, I think that although I have some issues with this drawing, it turned out pretty dang good if I do say so myself. So after adding some sparkles to the cover page, let's move on to the next part in this bullet journal, which is going to be my future log and goals page. Before we get into that though, I did want to just say I have an undated bullet journal on my personal online shop. I designed this bullet journal for my girlies out there who want a bullet journal but maybe don't have the time or the artistic skills. This is a complete bullet journal that is done on white grid paper but it has the drawings already done for you. It's also completely undated so you can actually start this bullet journal whenever you want in the year. It could be January, July, November, like literally whenever you want. All the drawings like I said are done for you so all you have to do is color them in in whatever color palette you want and I think that there are a lot of really cool themes in here. Flip it to one of my favorites. Every month has a cover page, a goal section, then a calendar that's again completely undated. So you can even start on whatever day you want. On the left on the next part is a habit tracker and then a mood tracker. Then there's a blank spread for whatever needs that you want to add. And then there are four weekly spreads in every single month, followed by one more blank spread for any extra weeklies or extra review pages before moving into the next month. Again, everything is undated, completely personalizable. And if you want to check it out, I will have my undated a bullet journal and my online shop in the description box below. Thank you so, so much for supporting me. If you do, I really, really appreciate it. Alrighty, let's get back to my bullet journal. And this is unfortunately where things start to go downhill. I told you guys at the beginning of this video that I had a lot of issues with this setup and this is where they unfortunately all come to fruition. But just to step back for a minute and talk about the basics, this year on the left is my future log. And then I have a Dutch store setup cut out, although it's kind of hard to see. And on the right spread, there will be my goals page. Now, if you are new to bullet journaling or this is the first video that you're watching by me, let me simplify things a little bit for you. So a future log is where you can write all the dates that you need to for the future. Now, personally, I put a future log at the beginning of my bullet journals because I set up my bullet journals every month. So I won't set up my August bullet journal setup until the end of July. But if I have a date in August, like for example, a doctor's appointment, a birthday, an event I need to go to, I want a place to write it down so I don't forget about it before I actually make that August setup. Up. So I'll put it in this future log here. They'll just hold any important dates and then I can always migrate them into the monthly setups later in the year whenever that setup is actually completed. Now, since this journal is only for six months, I only have six months here, which is July through December. However, at the beginning of the year, I usually do all 12 months. Now, a Dutch store is when a page is cut either horizontally or vertically in half. So instead of having two separate spreads, a spread being a page on the left and right, it's actually more like one spread with a flap in the middle that's like a half width spread. You can't really see it right here because the page is flattened but when I remove the binder clip at the top and move the page over you'll be able to see that it's basically just like a page cut in half like I said. <laughs> and then the goals page for me is pretty simple it's just a goals check-in. I like to set yearly goals for myself so at the beginning of the year I set a lot of goals in five different categories spiritual, personal, relationships, career, and academic. At the middle of the year I like to check in with myself and just see my progress when I'm doing well at what I need to work on more for the rest of the year. This spread is where I will dump all of my thoughts and opinions and progress notes on that, I guess. So on the left, I have one big box. That's where I'm going to be writing all of my like thoughts on the past six months, how I've been doing, that kind of thing. And then I will kind of reevaluate my goals for the rest of the year in the five boxes on the right, and they are divided into each category of goals. I also have my goals written down on Notion, which I have plenty of tours of on my YouTube channel, but I like to write it in my bullet journal as well. Well, just to have a constant reminder of what I'm working towards by the end of the year. Okay, hi guys, it's me. Now I'm filming the second portion of the voiceover about 10 hours after I filmed the first portion, which may be a little weird and I usually wouldn't like disclose information like that, but it's because I had like a huge mess up in the middle of this video. And while recording the voiceover, I realized that I could honestly fix it. And I don't know why I didn't fix it when I was actually filming a couple days ago, but I just decided to change things. That's being very vague. Let me explain. So basically, if you guys remember the 
vine of like blue and beige flowers that was next to the princess drawing that I was going to use. I wanted to use that on top of this beige strip on the left that you can see on the Dutch store here because it was going to be alcohol markers and flowers that was similar to the cover page, right? And it was going to be super cute. However, whenever I used Mod Podge on it to kind of seal all the marker in, for some reason I used way too much and the liquid smeared everywhere and absolutely ruined the drawing. The colors were everywhere. It was such a mess. So I had to discard it. Now my immediate solution to this was just to be okay, don't worry. I'll just draw it again directly into the bullet journal and color it in with water-based markers. That way it looks more integrated into the spread. However, I'm just going to speed through this part real, real quick so you can see to the end. I honestly hated the ending. I thought that this drawing looked super, super elementary. I thought it was basic. I thought it was boring. I thought it wasn't nearly as saturated as the art on the first page. So I decided today, two days later, to refilm a portion of the video and fix the art on the left here. And so now we're kind of in present tense. I literally filmed the second part of the video like in between the two parts of the voiceover, but I decided to sketch out a different piece of artwork on sticker paper and draw this instead. Now talk about a switch through in the middle of the video. I have never done anything like this before, but I decided that, you know what? This is your first couple spreads in the bullet journal. I want you to be happy with what you create. And literally I draw on sticker paper all the time. Why don't I just cover the artwork I don't like? So basically I'm drawing this very tall artwork that's gonna go right on top of those flowers. And this is a picture of a castle on a hill overlooking some water and then of course the moon and clouds. And in my mind, the picture in my head was like, if the first page had the princess looking out of a castle balcony, this is like the opposite view if you're looking from far away at the castle. So like one of these windows, maybe she's like on a balcony in one of these towers kind of thing. This particular page doesn't have any princess references. It doesn't have any roses on it, but honestly I was getting tired of drawing roses, so it's okay. But what it does have that I really appreciate is it is super saturated and dark blue. And that is what the cover of the journal is, the whale journal. And so I wanted it to look like that. And I wanted it to have the saturation and the magical vibes that the princess picture did, which is why I decided to redraw this. Now I did have some trouble going back and forth with deciding where I wanted the lights and shadows to be because I honestly thought I was very successful with having like the edges of the princess's hair and her clothes and all the light reflecting in the balcony. I thought that looked really good in the first picture. And this one is a little harder to make that happen. So I honestly relied on white gel pen after everything was done to make that happen. Also, I felt like, like I said, there's really not any brown in this and I wish there was a little more brown because of course there is brown in the original setup. So it makes sense to kind of tie that in because I also use a lot of beige in the final spreads, but it's okay. I still think this is a huge upgrade from the roses and you may not think so, which okay, <laughs> that's all right. If you prefer the roses, you prefer the roses. I just happen to prefer this. So I did this for my journal, but of course you can do whatever you want in your journal if you want to recreate it or take little bits from it. Whatever you think is cute, absolutely do that. But I just much prefer a much more detailed artsy saturated drawing like this one compared to what I had earlier. And I'm glad I took the time out of my day to try to fix things. It's not my favorite artwork in the entire world, but it is super cute. Also, I did a similar artwork, not gonna lie, in one of my weekly spreads for February, because I did a girl looking out of a window with roses around it, ironically. I'll put a picture of the cover page here, and then I'll put a picture of the weekly spread right here so you can see the differences. There's something very similar I've done before, but you know what? It's cute, so it's fine, okay? <laughs> I like it, and it's beautiful, and it's gonna look great in the journal. All right, so this is the final artwork. I'm super excited about putting this in and covering up what's on the left. Now I actually just glued in the tan stripe with literally just Elmer's glue, not anything crazy. So hypothetically, it should have peeled off rather easily, but for some reason that glue really stuck itself in. So I was trying to peel it off with my nails. All I really needed to peel off was like the top and bottom, but the bottom one just didn't want to come off all the way, it like ripped. So I covered it with a little bit of sticker paper and then I put in my new thing on top and look how it just transforms the spread. Oh my gosh, so much darker, so much more contrast, so much more color. Like I said, it's a little bit more blue, whereas the first drawing had a lot more brown in it, but I still prefer this to the roses, so it's all good. <laughs> the last little changes I wanted to make was I actually used a darker, more saturated blue to go on top of the stripes here. I felt like they were just too desaturated, honestly. Now, when I did make it darker, I couldn't quite read the words, which had the months of the year on them. So after going over to the second page and doing the same thing, I'm actually going to be pulling out some more white sticker paper and writing all of the headers with like a normal pen and then cutting them out 
that and gluing them on top. Well, not gluing because it's sticker paper, so it's just sticking them on top, but this is a way I could get around with using the dark, dark blue. Now you may be asking yourself why I didn't just use a white gel pen, and it's because white gel pen sinks into water-based marker, and so if I tried, it wouldn't be super stark white, whereas if I use this, it's obviously stark white because it's just paper. I didn't have time in the video to do these same headers for the three blue boxes on the goals page that have the categories of my goals in them, unfortunately, so I had to do that off-camera after filming because, like I said, I did not have time today to be shooting all this, okay? <laughs> but I, I figured it out. It's a little bit ghetto of a video, honestly, trying to end everything on a high note, but I think overall I did fix what I needed to fix. And with that, I can finally, finally say this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. We kind of went on a little roller coaster ride, but overall I think these two spreads turned out pretty dang good, especially the first spread. It's definitely my favorite of the two. Well, two and a half, I guess, because it is like a Dutch store spread. I hope you guys got inspiration from it. Comment down below if you did. As always, subscribe, subscribe, because we're on the road to 20k. I would love for you to join the fam over here. And of course, check out my undated bullet journal if you haven't already. I really do appreciate it. Send you guys so, so much love, and I will see you guys next week for my July bullet journal setup. Oh my gosh, I'm so hyped about it. So see you guys then. Goodbye!